Name unknown. Uh, sent us in a long email regarding rumours surrounding Tom Zenk's dismissal from the WWF in 1987. Rather salacious uh, that involves Pat Patterson or Vince McMahon Halcyon and then Tom leaving WWF in short order, which seems a bit fanciful to me. Uh, one of the sources was Billy Jack Haynes. So if we leave that there in that sense. Having said that, did you ever have any interaction with Tom Zenk in WCW? And did he ever talk about him leaving the WWF when he seems to be riding pretty high just a couple of years earlier? My recollection of Tom Zink, I maybe worked with him once, maybe. Tom Zink and myself, he was like higher mid-card. I was like lower mid-card. And so we kind of had... I only remember one match with him. And he's not the type to sit down and idly chit-chat back and forth. And he seemed kind of pissed off anyway. So whatever he said, whatever, man, whatever. Like David said, he said, what if I hip toss you? Yeah, fine, do it, do it, do it. Slam okay? Yeah, do it, do it, do it. And then I said, I'll stop you? Okay, what? I'll get you an eye. Okay, do it. Well, if you agree to everything, now the other guy's got to kind of agree to a lot of stuff too. So, no, I didn't have any kind of a uh, come home to Jesus <laughs> chat with Tom Zink. <laughs> and he wasn't there long. And Do you know, it's funny. He was in WCW for like six years. Like from 89 or I, 88 to 94, 95. He seemed to just be there for a while and just ever decreasing – down the card when uh when, I've talked to when this did with Shane he Douglas. when when did he leave probably 95 or something like that i've talked about this with shane douglas and it's one of those things where he said he seemed to have all the tools good luck and that kind of thing but just i don't know if it was a personality issue or what no but. that's what it was i'll tell you exactly what it is he can't talk hmm. he cannot talk now you just said on our show our regular show thunderbolt patterson and ole anderson could talk you into a building. They could talk, oh, if I could just, ooh, if I could. Thunderbolt would talk you in. Only would talk you in. Tom Zink could talk you out. <laughs> because he can't, and, and but see, uh, what was the strange thing about Oli, usually your good talkers are from down south because they talk a lot of good bullshit. Ole was from Minneapolis, so you wouldn't expect him to talk talk a good game, but he talked a great game. So, and that's what I try to tell guys who want to start out in the wrestling business. I said, first of all, learn how to wrestle first. Do that, or at least learn the fundamentals. Then work on your character and your delivery. But then, even even if you had a great interview, you have to sell yourself to whoever's in charge. You ever tell them you you got to give them the idea for your for your gimmick if you got got one, and you got to make the person feel that your character that you've decided on, you know, has has merit, has worth. Then if you and and you got to sell that to them. Now, if you're a young guy trying to sell a rapper gimmick to an old timer, yeah, I can see why it don't go. He don't see it. And and actually, I, I see it today, but I don't see it. If if you ha and if you think about Thunderbolt, if people wanted to do the rap, he'd just be more over even today, if if he could do it. But he didn't have to do it. But see, wrestling is more than just doing arm drags and drop kicks and all this kind of stuff and suplexes. It's more than that. It's the character that you that you portray. Take Tommy Rich. Decent worker, not great, decent. But he did that Southern Boys down south gimmick. It, and it was believable because it was true. And, you know, everywhere he'd went, because people thought he was really a good guy, and he is, and they identified with him. 
It's like any anything else. Like Roddy Piper talked the hell of a game. Because you thought he was about half nuts. You thought he was crazy. And he sold a lot of he sold a lot of tickets. So did Hulk Hogan. Sold a lot of tickets. Mm-hmm. Now if you were saying in today's world, can you imagine some guys delivering interviews like they used to deliver? You I don't see it. But I don't think I don't think anybody's actually tried it, to tell you the truth. So who does that today? Don't know one. Even a even AEW doesn't do it. They just try to go out there and talk. And see, screaming doesn't get it. Nobody really does those interviews anymore anyway. But you got to be creative. And that's why I like the, the guy who you say, the rapper, who is he? What's his name? Max Caster. Max, you know, that's different. But he only does a short version, which is okay, but nobody else does it. You know, what you're going to do when you get wrestling, you got to find a gimmick or a character that nobody else is doing and go do it. Even if it's a copy of something 10 years ago, but nobody's doing it now. So who are they going to compare it to? Only your older fans. And those are the fans that are more likely to stay with you. 